Hey, every solo trip I've gone to, I've taken a notebook. And here's why this is the best way to remember and record your trip if you're alone. Not with photos, not with videos, but with your own handwriting and thoughts. And with the way you try to trace the outline of the things in front of you, with a doodle or with words. Also, don't forget to ask the people you meet on the trip to write in your notebook too, because that's going to be an incredible record of the present moment. Jotting down those thoughts is also going to be the most accurate and raw record of your state of mind at the age you are. Here was the very first solo trip that I went on to Paris at 22. I remember I left that trip in a hurry, as if I was running away from everything that was overwhelming and hurting me in New York and back home. One thing about me is that I grew up with a pretty broken thought that I would never ever become a mom because how cold and loveless I felt inside for a long time. But when I was 18, I became a Christian and felt very much healed and loved. And from 18 to 22, the newfound hope made me feel like my new purpose in life was to become a mom. I even told my first year cohort in dental school that I chose dentistry because it would give me the flexibility to be a good mom. First of all, I didn't exactly actively choose dentistry, and second of all, I had no idea what I was talking about. But I sat in that economy seat on the flight to Paris, and I watched a film that changed my life. Right then and there, once again, I abandoned the dream of motherhood, and this time, for the better. I don't know if you've seen the film Boyhood. It's a beautiful film that took 12 years to make because the director wanted to capture the realistic growing up and aging of the characters in the movie rather than cast different actors for different scenes. Something clicked in me when I watched the scene where the mom in that film kind of breaks down, seeing her son eagerly packing to leave for college. After all she's done for him, she felt slighted that he was excited to leave. Honestly, it would have broken you too after watching two hours of the film that feels like 18 years of her heart-wrenching life that she gets through with so much strength, by the way, just for her kids. But she recovers from that heartbreak of parting with her son that seems like kind of the end of her existence and her meaning. And she finds her way. She finds a new education, career, and influence, and she finds herself in it. It might sound like a typical feminist movie, and I hope I didn't butcher it, but that's what did it for me. On that plane, I let go of my grand dream of becoming a mom, and at least it wasn't what I was supposed to dream of at 22. And then I arrived in Paris, my home of two weeks. Maybe I'll read you some of the pages in another video, but in this one, I'm gonna read you the last page of this trip. It goes, and I'm back, in New Jersey, back at home. The trip was so much needed and so good for me. I already feel a bit different from the day that I've been back. I feel more compassionate, more energized. I feel ready to get to work. And I have a small flame in me that's telling me to explore what I love, what I want. Maybe part of it was seeing that despite of my shortcomings, God had a plan for me in Paris and showed me the plans. Let me jot down a few things that I realized from this trip. I want to cease to dream about being a mom. Instead, I want to act, be, and learn as a 22 year old would. When I am about to become a mom, and maybe as I'm thrown into it someday, I'll learn then. Now that this whole mom dream has gotten out of the way, I want to find out who I am, how I am, what I love, and love myself despite everything. Then, love others beyond their flaws. I want to stop blaming. I came home to my mom passionately working at the sewing machine, and I'm really glad to see her finding new hobbies and a passion even as a mom, a wife, at her age of 50. And that was the last page of my Paris trip. It's funny how my inspiration was right there at home, sitting in front of that sewing machine, and it's a bit cliche, but I only was able to see it by flying thousands of miles away. And I think that's the point of traveling solo. It's always given me room to breathe and just observe and feel and look back at my life, and it's changed my life in so many ways. Since then, I've gone on so many trips alone, hence all these notebooks. And I wanted to tell this little story about my Paris trip and being 22 and wanting to become a mom and or not wanting to become one. But that's the thing about stories, they kind of marinate in me and there's always a day or a moment where it just feels right to finally write it and tell the story. 
And I can't explain why, but this one has been marinating for 9 years and it's finally out. And if you're listening to it, I think it was meant to be. This video turned out much longer than my usual 1 minute recipes, but I hope you like it. Let me know what you thought of this and let me know if you'd like to see some of my other notebooks that I've taken to so many other countries alone. Maybe I should put this on my podcast and bring the podcast back. Before we wrap up, I want to give a special shout out to our music artist, Mr. Hong. The music you're hearing in the background is called Seashells, and this is what I consider one of my comfort music that kind of tucks me into a calm, nostalgic place. If you enjoyed this and you want to listen to my other podcasts, you can look up the Cafe Maddie podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or on YouTube. So see you in more recipes, vlogs, and maybe another podcast. Have a good night. <laughs>